Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. My older daughter Maya was hogging up all the clamps and most of the tools for our customer project build, so I thought Cy and I could go ahead and jump on a little something that we've been needing for a while, and that's a nice push block. We do have a lot of different push blocks here, but one thing in particular is I cut a lot of wood that's two to three feet long because I do a lot of exotics, and I like to have a push block that's a little bit longer than normal, which that allows me to put more downward torque or force on the front end of the push block to keep it down snug against the table saw. So I wanted to build this one just a little bit longer than standard. Uh, the first thing I did was kind of draw out a handle that I thought was comfortable and then went over to the bandsaw to cut it out. You see I have to use the little bandsaw because Maya is hogging up the big one. Rupa is not available today so Sai is filming everything and she's helping me build this one. So far that seems okay, it's a little rough, so I think I'm gonna do some final shaping over at my spindle sander. This is really just going to be a template that I'm gonna to use to trace out the actual final shape of the handle. I just wanted it in a piece of wood, something that I could kind of grab and get a feel for. We do have the plans for this project. They're available for free as a download. There's not really plans. It's, I guess it's more of a measured drawing if uh, any of you out there would like to replicate this project. And uh, there'll be a link to that in the description below. So the next step, I'm taking this over to the block of wood that I'm going to use for the main part of the pushed block. And I know I need the handle to tilt forward about 10 or 15 degrees, uh, maybe even 20 degrees, something like that, a comfortable angle. So I'm just tilting it forward here and tracing it in on the block the way I think it should look. And I don't really need the block to be two inches thick all the way across. It's going to be kind of heavy if I do that. So I'm going to taper it down a little bit. And I think that kind of works for my rough outline. Now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out. I did choose a nice piece of tiger maple for this job, so uh, you certainly don't have to do that. You can use any wood at all. You could even use plywood if you like. I just had a bunch of small pieces of this left over after my recent humidor build. And I had to jump on my big bandsaw to do this cut while Maya was away from it. And then after about two minutes, she was back and told me to get off, so I had to go back to the small bandsaw. This is actually size bandsaw, so she wasn't very happy either since I made her film and I did the cutting. I guess I probably should have did it the other way around. And that's the approximate look for the push block here. Now we've got to go back to the spindle sander. I need to smooth all of these edges uh, and give it some final contouring. So if you tackle a project like this, you can use the plans, you can download and you can print uh, a pattern and you can cut it out. And if you're not satisfied with how it feels in your hand, you can just keep sanding it until, uh, until you get a shape that works perfectly for you. Okay, for the next step, I'm gonna make this push block a little bit wider. As it stands, that three quarter inch piece of wood's not really wide enough for me. It tends to rock back and forth left to right as I'm pushing pieces of wood through, especially if I try to put some downward force on it. So I'm gonna widen it up by adding another three quarters of an inch of thickness. I'm gonna use this piece of wood here. This is an exotic, it's called Morado. It's also called Bolivian Rosewood, uh, and even Pau Ferro, I think is another name for it. Um, it's a fairly common exotic, it's not a real high dollar exotic, and it's very beautiful when it's all finished and done. So I started by resawing the piece in half, so I'm going to put half on each side of my push block. I'm only going to put it on the lower part of the push block, I don't want it to be over my handle, that would make my handle too thick. And uh, luckily, Maya's away from the bandsaw again, so I'm going to jump over there and try to cut these out real fast.
Okay, so I've got the two pieces cut. I've got them cut a little bit oversized, maybe about an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around than what they really need to be. So I would like to trim them down now to fit perfectly. Uh, I'm going to put some double-sided tape on here to do that, and I'm not going to glue them yet. I, I'm going to have a couple more steps I want to do to them. So I'm just going to double-sided tape them and take them over to my router table and flush trim them. So this is a spiral upcut uh, flush trim router bit, and I'll put a link to these in the, one of these in the description in case you don't have one and you're interested in doing something like this. It works great. The ball bearing will write upon the, the surface that you have that you want it to match, and it'll just cut the other board perfectly flush to that surface. All right, so with that done, you can get a little bit better idea of what this push block is going to look like. Now I'm going to pull that Murado off so I can take the maple back over to the router table and round over the edges of the handle to make the grip a little bit more comfortable. And then I'm going to have one more step for the Murado before I come back and glue it on. So here I'm going to go ahead and stick these two pieces together. Uh, the portions that didn't get flush trimmed up above uh, weren't exactly perfect because uh, they were uh, just below the handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand those two to perfect so that the left and the right side match. Probably not critical that they're exact, but I just thought it would be one more touch that would look nice. And when I put them back together here, I can see where they're going to come. I think that does look nice. I'm going to trace onto the maple where they're going to go so that I don't round over my handle down below that point because that might look a little funny. So I'm just going to use a 3 8 inch radius round over bit to round over the edges of the handle. And all of the steps with the router bit so far could easily have been done with a handheld router. You don't have to have a router table. I just use one because I have it sitting here. But they work just as well with a handheld router. And you might notice that maple, being maple, uh, is going to burn quite a bit. Uh, so I notice this is especially true with uh, figured maple, like tiger maple, uh, because the grain is going kind of wildly in different directions. Uh, but we'll sand that off. I think that looks pretty nice there. Uh, so the sandpaper I really like to use these days is this stuff. It's 3M flexible sanding paper. It's just fantastic. It seems to last forever. It takes a really long time before a sheet is worn out and I actually have to throw it away. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in the description in case you want to see that as well. And we're finally ready to glue this thing together. Uh, just make sure you use three to five times more glue than is actually necessary and glue both sides of every surface. And if you're not sure, just put on twice that amount of glue and uh, do it again. So something interesting occurred as I was putting this together. Uh, as it looks right now, I have the Murado uh, flush with the maple all the way across, and I think that looks pretty good. But what I discovered when I was gluing it together, it was kind of moving, wiggling around, and I noticed that if I lifted the maple up in the center and let the Murado push down at the back end towards the handle side, I got a really neat profile look on top of the piece. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So there kind of is a nice shoulder effect going on where the Murado is a step down from the maple back here towards the handle. And it really ended up looking a lot nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it together like this. And then I'll, I'll work on trimming that Murado uh, flush at the bottom later. You can see the shoulder look here just a little bit better. The maple comes down flush towards the front, but towards the back where the handle is, it sticks up higher. So I'm just going to take this over to my jointer, and I'm going to joint that surface flush. I'll start by making a real short pass just on the end where it's longest, and I'll do another pass slightly longer, and I'll just keep going longer each time until I get to the end, and that'll end up taking more off of one side than the other. And there we have a nice flush look on the bottom, and we've kept our shoulder on the top. I think that looks really good. All 
I just want to sand this part flush to the back since I ended up changing the angle on that Murata relative to the maple. These didn't meet perfectly, but uh, they do now after touching them on the disc sander. And I'm going to take and just round over the very front edge of that so it's not a sharp corner. I think that might look just a little bit better too. And I do think that looks a little bit nicer there. So I'm going to go back over to my router table that has the 3 8 inch radius round over bit. And I'm going to round over whatever I can reach on the top of this uh, push stick with it. You might be able to notice that I'm not really touching the Murado towards the backside where the handle is because the maple is raised so high. But it gave me a full round over at the front. On the back, I'll just give those corners a light sanding. And I think that's going to end up looking nice. And you probably see that I don't even have access to our random orbit sanders. Maya and her boyfriend who's working with us today are hogging both of them, so I had to use that sander. But it worked out great. And now we're going to do some final touch-ups on sanding. So you might have noticed that this won't really function as a push stick until it has a piece of wood or something that sticks down below the bottom plane of it to act as a hook to push our wood forward. So I'm going to take this little piece of walnut here uh, shape it and use that to attach to the push stick. I figure this piece of wood will probably end up being cut several times. The blade might pass through this. So I want to attach this in such a way where I can just easily remove it and put a new one in whenever I want. Yeah, so I like the looks of that right there. And I think the best way for me to attach this is to go ahead and just thread it directly into the wood. So I'm going to pre-drill a hole here uh, through both pieces. Then I'll go ahead and pull the walnut off and I'll tap the push block. This is a Wood Whisperer thread tap. These were invented by Andy Klein and he gave me a set of these and they work fantastic. You can just drill this in at full speed, reverse the drill, take it out, and it's ready to screw a bolt in. And the bolt actually will have considerable strength, considerable pullout strength. These taps work great. Uh, a regular tap will work too. These are just faster and more efficient. The next step would be for me to enlarge the hole in the walnut catch piece. Uh, I want this big enough so that the bolt will pass through here without having to thread through here. Now I'll go ahead and put the whole thing together and see how that works out. And that does have pretty considerable holding strength. And while one would be plenty strong enough, I'm going to go ahead and use this one as a clamp to hold this piece in place for me to put a second one in. A second one is going to prevent this walnut catch from pivoting or moving from side to side. This is a really good system for me. I will frequently cut pieces where the blade is pretty close to the fence and my push block will pass right over the top of the blade and this catch piece will end up getting slices cut into it from the blade. And over time there gets to be enough slices where I need to either replace the push block or replace the catch. In this case I'll just unscrew this catch piece, uh, make a new one and screw it on. And in that way this push block should last forever. And that really does it for the build. I'm going to let Cy take over here and apply a lacquer finish to the push block. She has excellent lacquer spraying technique. The key to getting a good finish with lacquer or any spray finish is to just start spraying before you actually reach the piece and continue the spray after the piece. Basically don't start or stop the stream of spray while you're on the piece and you end up with a really nice uniform finish. We gave this piece about three or four coats of lacquer total and just sanded very lightly between the coats. And when it was all done, we gave it a quick sand with 1500 grit paper and the whole thing has a glass smooth finish.
Well, that's about it. We'll do a little test cut here so we can see how it operates, but overall I'm very pleased with the project. Uh, it only took us a couple hours from start to finish. We waited about an hour uh, for the glue up to dry in between. So it was a really quick project and a fun project and now I have a nice push block that should last a long time. And there you have it. Thank you very much for watching.